welcome back to the Cube. We are at the O'Reilly Fluent Confluent or O'Reilly Fluent Con uh, Conference. It's live in San Francisco at the Hilton Hotel. So we uh, everybody's just finishing lunch. There's a lot of buzz and, and uh, noise here in the background, but we're going to move on. And one of the things that we like to do on the Cube is you know we talk to uh, the practitioners and uh, and we're excited about startups, right? Because startups is where innovation is happening. It's where people are doing new and, in, and exciting things. And they actually had a startup competition here at the show. So we have with us here James Ferguson, that's right, the CEO of Quickly. Uh, which, if you can see on the screen, is, is, is spelled an interesting way. Well, that's, that's, that's quite easy, Jeff. Um, kilowatts, KW, IQ, intelligence, Lee, quickly, fast. Oh, awesome. So All right, great. energy intelligence. Okay, great. So welcome to theCUBE. Thank you very much. Great for you to so, have us here. Yeah. Absolutely. And obviously you have an accent, so you came from, uh, from far away. From Switzerland, actually. From but, Switzerland. But, yeah, native to England, yeah. Okay, great. So what brought you, besides the uh, the competition, what brought you to, to Fluent? What's the value of coming to something like this? Uh, first of all, if you if you can get in touch with the, the really top guys with the technologies, you need help, they'll give it to you. It's very open, very friendly, very supportive. It also confirms that our um, infrastructure stack makes sense. Okay. Uh, we've got a great CTO, I mean, real rock star. Um, mm -hmm. Couldn't be here, sadly. But he, he actually put the application in and said, we've got to be there. And uh, to then win is, well, it's for him, it's great affirmation. You know? What's his name? He's, he's Andreas, Andreas Muller. Andreas, shout out for Andreas. Give him a wave <laughs> to the camera. Hopefully he's watching, uh, is he in Switzerland also? Uh, yeah, he, well, he's on the, on the border of, in okay. Germany. But, okay, yeah. great. So one of the uh, the big themes we're talking about, obviously, is social and mobile and, and, and collaboration, all that stuff's going on. But, but the new thing, and we've talked a lot about here, is the Internet of Things and the industrial Internet and how, you know, having sensors on all these devices and this ubiquitous connected network and obviously a lot of horsepower in terms of the the CPUs and, and the bandwidth, how that's changing the world. Yeah. And you guys are right in the midst of that. So why don't you tell us a little bit about what's going on with Quickly and what you guys are up to and what did you show here at the sure. uh, at the startup? Okay, um, a little bit of background. Um, we've been doing consultancy in the energy game for a long time in buildings. So trying to help people save energy, that simple. Commercial buildings? Yeah, big commercial buildings. Okay. Uh, Tower of London was our, our first uh, client with a new product, which is fantastic. <laughs> Interesting um, commercial application that yeah. happened in the Tower of London, yeah. I think, right? But I mean, our, our real audience is, is typically people like um, Honeywell, who've now signed us as a supplier, okay. um, who they, they do energy performance contracting. Um, but there's a lot of the heavy lifting, you know, number crunching that we can automate for them. That makes it easier rather than them spending days on spreadsheets. So they're not adding customer value if they're pouring over a spreadsheet. But uh, it used to be you have to de de develop applications and deliver them on a PC. But with the new technologies, you can real really build real engineering products actually in the browser. And, and you can also use uh, techniques like WebGL with the uh, visualization tool. So, I mean, I'm seeing stuff in data that I've not seen before purely because I can see it better. Um, so it's just a, it's a change of game in the last couple of years. So is your so so you, you you deliver software? Yep. And is it and is it in the cloud? Yep. Software as a service. Yep. Software as a service. And does it connect to devices? I mean, how does that work in terms ah, okay. of the energy management? Uh, typically, um, bigger outfits have um, their meters managed. So, basically, uh, a utility company will be taking half the half alley reads, for example, and taking off into the cloud. Um, so smart meters you may have heard of. It's, it's this right. technology of reading things at high resolution. Okay. We then get independent weather data. It has to be independent because otherwise, if you're trying to diagnose the patient, you know, the kid puts his th thermometer in his own mouth. Um, it's about it being independent. Okay. Um, so independent data, bring the two together. And then anything that happens in the building, because it's an energetic process, running a boiler or a chiller or something like this, it's reflected almost like in ripples in this external fabric that you can think of uh, encompassing the building, being okay. the energy in, and the weather, which determines the weather out, okay. you know, the energy out, right, if you like. Right. So, so, so it's what pattern is, recognition, basically. So what are the, the kind of ROI opportunities that, that, okay. that this affords people? Uh, it, it can be crazy. Uh, we did some work with a supermarket chain where we were talking six-week payback, and, I mean, that's just unheard of. Um, and but, what, uh, are you do, what are you doing for them? What, what, what's but, and, and controlling the day, thermostats? Or are you just we, we are you we identifying crazy stuff? You, or, it's, you know? Yeah, absolutely. That. It's the anomalies. It's okay. where, it, where it doesn't make sense. So I mean, a, a simple example for the domestic person, they'd understand this, is let's say you get a power cut and you've got to reset your VCR. And I'm an old guard here, you know, right, old right. days. But you reset we, we talked about your, VCRs earlier in the show. <laughs> so enough, yeah. Flashing 12, 12, 12, yeah, 12. Exactly. You go and reset that because it's in your face. Okay. But somewhere up in the loft or down in the basement, there's an old water boiler there, and its time clock stopped, and now it's heating at the wrong time of day because it didn't get fixed. And and, and more, I suppose, more um, relevant to big buildings is things like the uh, daylight saving time change. 
all the control systems out there, the, you know, there's great control equipment, but it's got to be programmed. Right. And, and if people haven't specified in it, it doesn't change. And so you're heating for nine hours instead of eight hours in, in the day, and that's like 7% saving off the bat for nothing. I mean, it's, it's a few minutes work to fix that. And does your software just collect the data and, and, and deliver back in an easily uh, digestible or in a way to analyze it? Or do you guys also do the analysis and oh, actually come back with suggestions on uh, absolutely. I mean, we, we're, where we're the getting, holes are? Yeah, we're getting to a point now where we, we take this weather data and energy data, and that's all we know about the building, but we can identify the sorts of plant in there, how they're being controlled, um, algorithm problems with the controls. And if you're, I mean, let's say you're one of the big um, chains, like for example, a Starbucks or something like this, you've got thousands of outlets. You can't put an energy consultant on site in every one of those every day. Right, right. But what you can do is you can look for anomalies and say, okay, today we've got 10 sites that have gone crazy. Let's go fix those. Or we've got a problem with an external temperature sensor. You know, let's send a guy with a ladder. Okay. Rather than sending a consultant down and then he has to work out what's wrong, and then send another, you're talking $2,000, uh, dollars, bucks, whatever, right, a right, day right. costs for no gain if you can actually brief them up front. So you're getting, that, you're getting that information back to corporate, to the, the facilities exactly. guys, you're yeah. giving Typically them stuff they can Typically there's an energy manager on. or a facility manager will have that responsibility. Yeah. yeah, it's interesting. We were at the Splunk show last right. year and one of their funny examples of kind of intelligence in the, in the industrial internet was apparently someone in Japan figured yeah. out that one of the ways to measure the health of a building was the data coming off the elevators. And yep. you could tell whether people were getting ready to move out, you know, business was bad. Yep. Not energy health, but, you know, tenant health yep. by the patterns that you could identify in these yep. elevators. We'll, we'll see crazy stuff. I mean, in, in the simplest of cases, um, you're a pub, um, in England, of course, we live in uh, pubs yeah, we pretty like much. Pubs. There's a lot of beer drinking going on here, <laughs> yeah, too. It's not bad either. Great, great <laughs> event, great, 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 great things. Um, but um, for example, you know, people will complain maybe in winter it's got a bit cold, and the, just the bar manager will go and turn the thermostat up. And then same sort of time of year, but in the spring rather than, well, sorry, yeah, spring you call it rather than the fall, right, autumn. Right, right, right. People will open the door to get cold. They leave the heating on and the doors open. And then some suddenly, you know, maybe June, July, someone will say, why is this radiator still hot? You know, we've got the door open and the windows open and this is still hot. Right. Oh, I forgot. Right, right. And that, that forget, I forgot, can be, you know, difference between profitability or loss right. for a small enterprise, you know, small pub or restaurant or whatever. It can be straight on to the bottom line, of course. You know? Right. So talk a little about right, we're fluent software development. Uh, talk about, so you said you were a consultant for many years, so you've been in the game. For my sins. <laughs> how, how kind of the software development environment has changed as well as the infrastructure. Yeah. That, that actually, I guess, can help convince you yeah. to leave the consulting world and actually build a product because of this right. opportunity. So how has that changed, and how has that affected your ability to really deliver value to your clients? Okay, I mean, there's a long backstory, and I don't want to bore people. Well, that's but right. I mean, we got a few minutes. Okay. You give us uh, the, uh, Cambridge the, University, the medium version. The, uh, the government in the UK okay. gave us a grant to see if it was possible to work out automatically what was wrong with control systems. And so we were going into these um, the Cambridge colleges where we were given sample uh, test sites to work on, and literally walking around with floppy diskettes full of data. And it got to the point where they were mailing us the diskettes and we were driving to look at the plant rooms. And actually, having looked at it on Excel spreadsheet or whatever, we realized that we knew what we were going to see because it obviously represents it. So, so, and this is the first step of pattern recognition. Right, right. And then we thought, well, most of these control systems then weren't connected to the net, so getting data was a problem. Ah, but okay, energy meter readings, because it's a commercial contract with your utility company, everyone has it at some level. And the resolution's been getting it better. We can get weather data anywhere in the world now, any, you know, whether it's humidity yeah. in Singapore or and three year history or whether right, it's, right. You know, it's available now. So, so if you like, the resources were always available, but the technologies to make them happen, were really, it was really hard work. But now with the new tool chains, um, and that's the, the really big change, we can do the anal analytics in the background on a server um, using a language called R. Um, that's pat real pattern recognition. And then the wiring it together to get it to the client through the browser, it's, it's all the guys, the guys that are here that are presenting on the tools. We're using those tools and they do most of the job for us. Yeah. So we're you know, standing on the shoulders of giants, right, if you know what I mean. Right. Yeah. So you touched on a little bit, and in, in, again, industrial internet that's coming in terms of big data. And you know, how are you either using or planning to use uh, a, a much larger array and quantity uh, and frequency of data to really add more value into this opportunity? Actually, well, value is where it comes from. I mean, and people don't really think about this, but if you think $1.5 trillion per year, that's our energy waste in buildings. And you and I, 
maybe it's a couple of hundred bucks. But when you start looking at your schools, your universities, your public buildings, it's $1.5 trillion a year. Wow. The biggest player and the most arguably the most competent would be Honeywell. They're doing, in their energy performance contracting, a hundred million turnover over 10 years. So they're beginning to scratch the surface of the possibilities. And they can only serve the big guys, right, you know, right. the really big buildings. Right. We feel that it should be that every coffee shop should be able to get good, timely, relevant advice that they can understand. They don't, not everyone's an energy manager, right, right. but hey, go and adjust that thermostat, that time clock, That'll make you more comfortable and cost you less. Right. Performance goes up. Interesting. Maybe you just answer this question, but you know, we're we're uh, we're open source folks. You know, we yeah. love to, uh, helping everybody out. So, just uh, it'll kill some of your business. But give give the folks out there just kind of what's the the, the easiest, simplest. You know, oh, take it, care it, of the, take care of it right out of the gate. It, it sounds absolutely crazy, but check your time clocks. I mean, certainly after a, a daylight savings change, you know, spring and fall, just just check you've moved your time clocks. Um, if you're not there, a lot of people say, well, hang on, if I let it cool down, won't it use, you know, then heat it up, won't that use more to let it cool down and heat up? If you can let it cool down and you're heating, let it cool down. If, if it's in summer and you can let it get hot because you're away on holiday, let it get hot and then cool it down. Okay. And you'll save energy that way. All right, good tip. It's good for the environment. It's good for the for the pocketbook, as they at. say in the uh, <laughs> in the ads. Well, James, thanks for coming along. So just yeah. one last final question. So where are you guys in, in the uh, state of the company? What's what's happening next? We'll give you a little okay. plug. That, that's great, thank you. Um, we've, uh, well, we were uh, final at Le Web in Paris, which was great, and now we've just won here, which is- Did you us. win? Yeah. Oh, you're yeah. the winner. Oh, hey, yeah, that's great. I should say we're one of three winners. Oh, okay, and, one of three and winners, so that's really all right. Great tech here. Kind of a democracy, yeah. that's all right. <laughs> yeah, and, um, um, so, I mean, that's, that's good for credibility. That's yeah, it, you know, investors can see that the risks are coming down and we're real, you know, credible and right, so on. Right. Um, but we're beginning to get to revenue with our bigger clients, some of the big utility companies in Europe. Um, as I mentioned, Honeywell, we're, we're a supplier now for them. Right, right. And as we get to traction, we're going to be raising a seed round of a, about a million. Okay. Um, and that should get us on that first step and hockey awesome. stick after that. Awesome. Hope. <laughs> Hopefully there's some great investors out there or even more importantly customers that yeah. uh, take advantage. Again, investors at quickly.com yeah, if yeah. I can just put quickly that. Quickly.com, yeah. not spelled as we spell it. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, he's got the t-shirt. All right, great. Well, James, thanks a lot for coming on the queue. Yeah. So uh, again, we're at the O'Reilly Fluent Conference in San Francisco, the Hilton Hotel taking you out to the to the conferences, finding the smart people, the winners of the uh, of the startup competition, asking them the questions that you would like to ask them and really helping bring the conference to you. We invite you to participate. Again, the hashtag for the conference for the conference. I'm having a hard time with that. It's fluent. Something in the uh, in the lunch today is uh, hashtag um, fluent conf. Hashtag fluent conf. So join in on Twitter. We invite you to participate. We'll be back with our next guest after this short break. Thanks for being on theCUBE. Thank you.